What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Her Lounge podcast. I'm excited to be here. We head out to San Antonio right after this podcast. So if you are a listener from San Antonio, Texas, come out to uh, my husband's show. It's uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll have Javi Luna and uh, Midnight Castillo, or Jesus Midnight Castillo, I should say. Um, And don't forget, this podcast is brought to you by Her Apparel. Um, I keep saying I'm going to drop something. Listen. I'm going to be honest with you guys why it has been delaying. But first, let's go into our positive quotes. I wanted to do positive affirmations today just because it's midweek when you listen to this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes Mondays can start off kind of Tuesdays. You just kind of come on weekend. And then Wednesday gets here. It's hump day. You're like, yes, just a few more days. But here we go. Today will be a good day. Everything will be okay. I am in control of my life and my feelings. I have people that love me. I have a lot to be grateful for. Tomorrow will be better. Everything I need is within me. I like that, man. Yeah, That's right? why I, I really I hope more people like get a morning journal and read it and, and then write in it rather and do some affirmations in the morning. It Just really because helps. it really helps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so the five minute journal that I, I used to do, mm-hmm. I went to a long form journaling instead of the mm-hmm. short term, short form. Uh, form. Um, it used to say, give yourself three affirmations and then it'd make you say, I am. And then you'd have to write a little quick paragraph. Mm. Like I am grateful. I am, you know, happy or whatever it is. Or, you know, I'm anxious, whatever good or bad thing it was. It was like one of those things that you had to write about. Yeah. And then it has the evening version of it. So you write in the morning and then in the evening, you basically journal like how your day was. And it's again, three easy questions. And it's for people. It's the five minute journal. Uh, and it's just for people who... Uh, they went to charging, so <laughs> I had to like quit it. So yeah, that's the reason why um, that no longer is in my apps. But um, I should pay for it. It was really easier than the long form that I'm doing right now. But because I like sometimes to write, I hated that there wasn't enough room to like elaborate on the oh, five minutes. Oh, so you wanted to keep going. Sometimes I did, you know, because sometimes I did have shit to talk about that I wanted to get off my chest and kind of document and then kind of, I didn't, you know, and sometimes I don't feel like talking shit, you know, like I just want to go on with my day. But it, it's super weird because when I started writing in that journal again, uh, I, I didn't realize that I hadn't written in it all of 2020, which would have been the best time to write in it. So in my long form journal, mm-hmm. it's morning pages. Oh, okay. Okay. So I yeah. use morning pages. So morning pages, I did document during that time, a lot of, a, a few, and then I fell off and, and I put on there about the pandemic. We don't know what it is. I think I told you also that I happened to run, I was trying to clean up my YouTube channel because I want to post some of those videos um, for my patrons that I used to, I'm going to take them off. So if you haven't watched them yet, guys, they're going to be taken off my YouTube channel and I'm going to give them to my patrons again. So these were exercises that I did at home all through quarantine. Mm -hmm. And so they were for patrons that signed up during that time. So um, they haven't been really watched a lot. So that's why I know people haven't really got to see them. So, But these are perfect exercises for for those who are not ready to hit the gym yet. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, you can go buy like three pieces of equipment from Walmart and just kind of basically hit it in your backyard. So, (laughs) Dude, you know what's even crazier is that uh what the last thing i had written about was how good you know things were and how good like dawn's uh like new promotion was and everything was going so well and we hope to visit california this later this year (laughs) and this was just before everything broke out oil and gas took a shit you know she unfortunately lost that amazing role uh obviously california is the worst place to ever go now sorry guys that listen from there but you hope you understand I think we have some California listeners who, oh, yeah, who, feel, the, who feel that way um, about California right now. It's and crazy. speaking about California, let's great segue, Rob, as to the book that I'm reading again. Yeah. Um, again or? The I mean, first... again, I'm talking about again, okay. as in we just spoke mm-hmm. about it. Um, <sighs> Marissa, if you're listening, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> what the fuck? Brace yourself. But I don't know what it is. Now I know for a fact that it's the algorithm. Um, Oh, blame it on the algorithm. That knows what the fuck I like to talk about. And um, coincidentally, I was strolling through Instagram and I go through, I see Bryn Brown's post. 
she's like a psychologist or oh, something. Brene Brown. Brene Brown. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. From U of H. And so she put this book out there and it's called Irreverse- Irreversible Damage, right? And um, basically it's about more so not adults transitioning, right? It's children transitioning and the damage that it's done to some of the women who, so basically these are, okay, so there's a thing, a, a thing called detransitioned, right. which means you went back mm-hmm. to whatever you were before. Correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot, that happens to most a people. A lot, yeah. a lot. And I had no idea. I'm reading this book right now. I'm not that far into it. As I was telling Rob, it's going to be TMI, but I'm only able to read my damn book when I go and, you know, take my book take care of business in the restroom because I'm, you know, either putting a toddler to sleep or, you know, uh, feeding a, a baby. You know, I was trying to read while breastfeeding and it just was not working. It was like, it why, just was why not, not working. I figured that'd be a good time. It, it is, but it's almost like, I feel like I'm losing this little, like the connection supposed to be during your breastfeeding time with your baby. And I'm just kind of, she's just kind of staring at me and I'm reading a book. It's kind of like, oh, okay. I'm not doing no, I don't know. I'm sober breastfeeding too. That's a whole other topic, but I'm t- I'm hanging in there for as, as long as I can, especially with this, you know, food shortage, um, and formula has gone up in price. So what hasn't? Let's yeah. start with that. What hasn't gone up in price? I'm I'm officially I'm officially uh, going to say that I'm going to go ahead and order my um, the the meals the my patriot supply the my patriot supply or so any I, brand if you can because yeah. I, I was listening to other companies that are already cutting off orders because they can't so they i know they can't keep up so i already told pete i was like so he made some little extra money while we were out in um addison mm-hmm. right that was unexpected so i said that money will be invested on nice. getting supplies that you know what i'm saying we need should shit hit the fan you know what i'm saying and i know it sounds crazy like mighty soul really this is not doomsday i feel like we're going that direction and the more um i don't know it's not even that it's doomsday right but it's, it's at least for us uh, or anybody in, in the country that's going to go through a winter you want to be prepared for the winter at the and what does least. that even mean we're gonna have a dark winter what does that even mean well they, he did say that phrase didn't he it's gonna be a dark winter what it, does that mean that who knows what that means but at the very least we know that it's going to be winter here in texas and if you can't go to farmer's markets and you can't you know go outside and if you don't have your own stuff just be stocked up on some things like we were to groceries today for curbside i said get an extra thing i've been doing this the last two weeks get an extra thing of toilet paper get an extra thing of paper towels get an extra thing of everything that's essential beans rice those kind of things water and that way four or five weeks from now we are stocked up for the next at least four or five weeks after that or if not more i could not believe it like i was like yeah this, this can't be real but i did go to the grocery store the other day and it did say they'd have eggs on like wednesday or some shit i was like y'all are fucking out of they didn't eggs? Have eggs when you went no i heard about that in other states but i hadn't seen anybody i hadn't yet. seen it here either until i went to the store Mm. And I was like, why don't y'all have eggs? But it's also the cage-free eggs. So mm-hmm. it's also like, they had the other kind of eggs. Like just regular, smegular? Yeah. My, know, my soul's really... not about that life. Y'all, one of these little diamonds, little g- gemstones is poking me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> cut that out, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so it was more of the... The cheaper eggs were still available, right? But not the the more like the I ones. I saw shelves of pet foods are like that's rolling low. Pet food like cat dog cat and dog food. Get out of here, really? Yeah. yeah, I don't know, man. I'm starting. I'm really like just. I'm tired of thinking. I was just telling today when I we were working out with my trainer, we were talking about people like uh, the vaccination thing and so forth. And he was like, "I'm not vaccinated. It's my choice," you know, blah blah blah, and. And so I just said, exactly. I just like, I'm tired of, I'm tired of these conversations. He's the model of health, by the way. It totally. I mean, what's going to happen? It's like he wouldn't even feel a mosquito bite. Right. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like legit. He doesn't, he doesn't, he rarely eats out. Yeah. He doesn't do any of that. I'm not that extreme. And I don't know that I'll ever be that extreme. And you don't have to be to have a good immune you system. You know? Yeah, you don't. But um, And sometimes that shitty food can be good for you because when you eat out, uh, we I know a guy, we went out of town, we went to Playa de Carmen. He had some of the food, like the buffet food that they have in those resorts. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. He was in his room for the remainder of the night. Oh my God. He goes, I can only have rice and chicken. 
And that was it. Like just a self-imposed kind of diet. That's his rice and chicken, broccoli, rice and chicken, broccoli. And he's super duper cut, right? Mm -hmm. But he's very slender, but he's super duper cut, you know, but that's his meal. And he couldn't eat outside of that. So anywhere we went, like if we went out of the resort, he, there was no tasting these, you know, food trucks or, mm-hmm. you know, these vendors out there because he was done. Like he couldn't do that. But he could do alcohol, which is interesting. Mm. Mm-hmm. I know. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so I've been reading this book. Um, and I'm not that far into it yet, but it would trip me out about it so far is um, I also ordered The End of Gender. Mm. so that's another oh you're gonna be real educated pretty soon yeah because here's the thing and i feel like the what this book is about the irreversible um irreversible gender yes uh, sorry i was like well um that book is kind of how i feel i feel if you're an adult and you've already transitioned and you've done the do you know what you were doing, right? It wasn't like you were influenced by your decision. You probably felt like that for a long time. That's what you mostly hear, right? Is Mm -hmm. that I felt like that since a kid, blah, 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 blah. And then they go through the whole change, you know? And then some of them are regretting it later, you know? But the the one particular story that I'm on right now, which I haven't finished, Mm -hmm. I'll just say what what it's, it's, it's starting is, this little girl started off completely like a little girl. Your Barbie uh, dollhouse girl, uh, very girly girl, plain. Um, she was also very smart. So it was kind of hard for her to fit in in school, right? How, how old was she? She was little, like elementary. Okay. Okay. And then, then junior high happens, you know, and she's like really trying to fit in. And all of a sudden, it's a group of girls who feel they need to transition into a man or a boy. And so they, she goes through this tomboy stage, which that's what the mom thought. It was a tomboy stage. So she's talking to her. They went through every therapy that she could, you could possibly think of because she really just thought her daughter was going through something. But the daughter was adamant that she was, she's always felt like a boy and was in a boy's body. She's like, what are you talking about? Like, mm. and she's an affluent, like, attorney, this, the mom mm-hmm. is, right? And so, um, and so she was like, You've never expressed that to me before. Never. You've never said, I've never, you have never seen you play with boy toys. Like never, never all of a sudden, right? So basically I'm at the part where she started going through the, taking the hormone stuff to, to change her body. I started watching um, the podcast episode that she did with Rogan, Mm -hmm. right? And so I don't know if I'd like, it's a spoiler alert that she, she's talking about this one particular person but evidently i guess she took it and she wasn't able to have children which she didn't know was a side effect side effect of taking these hormones and all these things and what what it does to them in the future and now she was wanting to reverse back to try Mm. to have children and she'd already fucked up her shit damn so it's kind of like one of those things also, and, and if you're from California, like, and you know of this, maybe you can confirm it, which I don't know why she would put it in a book if it's not confirmed, right? But um, schools are having Planned Parenthood set up shop, right, in California. And basically, they can come in and give your kid horm- hormonal treatments should they express that they are, they feel like they identify with whatever it is. So let's just say, for example, you're a parent and um, you're like, my child's name is Sarah and I'm going to call her Sarah because she's fucking Sarah. Right. But she goes to school and feels like Tom. So in school, they call her Tom because that's what she wants to identify with. And you go to school looking for Sarah to get Sarah checked out of class because you guess she's got to go somewhere. Sorry, we don't have a Sarah. Yeah, you do. No, I don't have a Sarah, but I have a Tom. No, I don't know who Tom is, but I know who Sarah is. Yeah, I'm sorry. So we don't have a Sarah here. What? It's Tom. If you don't give me my goddamn Sarah up here. I mean, bitch, who the hell are you to tell me my child is not Sarah? But because the child identifies as Tom, the school is going to go by what 
Tom identifies, Sarah identifies by, and it's a law. They have to, and they can do it behind your back without them knowing it's legit. I thought that was fucking just, I thought that was just an Instagram story. Yeah. That, you know, I mean. Do you remember being in school and like, let's just say it's a, uh Probably this happened in college, but probably in, I think in high school as well, where you would go first day of school, let's say it's your freshman year, and your teacher would pass around like the syllabus, and they'd, it maybe pass around like a name sheet, so you could write your name, and she'd read it off, so she can like, oh, okay, you're, you know, Robert, you're Mighty Soul, and then next to it, they'd be like, do you have a nickname that you'd like to go by? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. The teacher would do that to be kind and be like, okay, uh, your name's Robert, but you'd like to go by Bobby or Bob yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah. But it, it would never get to the point where the administration would not recognize you by what you are or what your name is, and then also not let your parent you know what i mean okay let's go even further you weren't allowed to take the nurse wasn't allowed to distribute any type of medication should you have a headache should your stomach hurt anything like that because they weren't allowed to and now a school's allowed to give you hormones that's that's insane to me y'all dear i was god we're living through a really fucked up time and yesterday chingo and i since y'all are going out of town again like last week we did three you know, probably four and a half hours of podcasting oh, yesterday. Wow. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it, you know, the first episode was, I mean, there's all these things going on in the world, but somehow one of the shows ended up being a lot about The Closer, Dave Chappelle special, and Little Nas X and that whole thing. And, you know, I did a lot of research before yesterday's podcast about all kinds of stuff. And I was thinking to myself, if we're honest with, if I'm honest with myself, if I didn't have kids, I would probably be as selfish as somebody like Tim Dillon or whatever, who are very funny, but have a good point when they say like, this isn't my battle. This is the parents' battle, right? All this shit I don't care about. I'm not going to consume my day, my time, my energy, my mental health with it because totally. it's so outrageous. Yeah. But if you have kids, you have to. Yeah, I agree. Because I don't know that I'd care this much about what you're teaching my child in school. If you didn't have kids. If I didn't have kids. Now, I'd probably be like, damn, that's fucked up. Did you hear about what's happening? There's still a the future is, of the you know, country. Yeah, and that's about as much as I probably would have taken it. Here's what worries me is that Penny starts school next year. And granted, she's probably not going to go to public school, right? I'm probably going to put her in private school. But I hate that I have to put her in fucking private school because I pay taxes. Right. And she should be able to go to a public school without me a having good to... one. Yeah, without me having to be concerned. Now... One thing I wanted, I, I do want to, at some point in my life, and sooner than later, and I know you're going to say, like, you're not really trying to, I, I would, I do need, I would love to go and attend some of these school board meetings that they have for my area that I live in, mm-hmm. just to kind of see what kind of bogus shit you're trying to implement. Like, there's got to be other parents who feel the same way I do. And I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about religious point of views. I'm not talking about political point of views. I'm just talking about simply the education your child is getting. It's that simple. You know what I'm saying? Like, why aren't these kids getting like fucking top notch, you know, education? Why are their reading skills so low? Why are we like number fucking 37 on the list of of like education? Yeah. It's retarded. It makes no sense. Like, how are we so low? Like, we should be... If we're, if we're the country everybody wants to come to, why are we so low on the list of, like, education uh, system is so poor? It makes no sense. Yeah. None. No, I, I thought I was thinking about that, too, and I, I do want to find out why it is that the United States is so low, but it's still the place with the most innovation. Like, most things come out of here, right? Whether it's medicine or technology, and yet... Our literacy rate, our, our everything yes. is just not as good as other And here's countries. the scary part: the graduates that have been out of that been were affected by this whole lockdown and you know pandemic situation. They're the future, and they're going to be the most illiterate classes that graduate. Did you know that? Uh, I mean, I'm not surprised. No, they did. They did a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Like I forgot what the statistic number was, but it was like. They're going to be the most illiterate group of graduates. How sad is that? Mm. And if you're a parent, that should worry you because you're probably no longer going to be here at some point. And don't you want your kid to be able to fucking survive without you? Like, I mean, I know I do. I mean, I want for them to strive and and be able to do amazing things, you know? And um, that's why, like... It sounds weird and it sounds like really like you, you, you're doing too much for a three year old, but that's why I sit there and I turn little things in like little stuff into, into like games, but it's a learning like, and that's why I never trust me. Any of the dolls that are sitting there, I've never purchased not one doll for her. Yeah. None. Now she's got bins full of flashcards, sight words, which 
she can't really identify all the alphabet letters in the alphabet yet. So it's like, what's the purpose of sight words? But even if she starts memorizing those things, right? Mm -hmm. Sight words, then she can start recognizing letters. Like right now, I le- I like for her to, I let her play on the phone, right? Because mm-hmm. I like for her to like, I said, okay, you want to send grandma a message? She'll say yes. I'm like, okay, send an A. And then she'll look on the keyboard and she'll be like an A. So if you turn it into a game, I mean, a phone can also be something, but like, I don't want for to her to be on the phone, obviously, but yeah. I want her to know like, it makes it fun for her, you know, and I entertain her and, you know, she's getting that little dopamine of, oh, I'm on the phone. You know, I'm doing what my mom and my dad and my sister and everybody in this house does. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? So um, I try to tell her, you know, I'm like, okay, type an A. And uh, she has that little old school iPhone. So she's a, if she's on Wi-Fi, she can text me. Mm-hmm. So I tell her, I'm like, okay, send me the letter A. Okay, I'm going to send you the letter B. So we're we're texting back and forth with each other. And it's funny. It's just A, B, C, D. And so I'm like helping her. And so you'll see a text message thread of she and I have just the alphabet. the alphabet. Yeah. So if you have an old iPad or an old iPhone laying around, like you can play a bunch of games. The same thing we do with numbers. So she's able to count to 20 and she's three. I mean, mm. that man's pretty damn good, you know? Um, there's this ad I keep getting for uh, for something on a product on Instagram where it's uh, it's a it's a booklet, you know, with different activities, different mm-hmm. writing activities, mm-hmm. and it it comes with a pen, and it it's supposed to help with uh, like hand eye coordination and uh, penmanship. Mm. So it's like let's say it's it's a sentence or even letters. Let's just say all the A's, capital and lowercase, through the whole alphabet. You trace it, you know, you go through the whole thing, and within like 15 minutes, it it erases itself. So it's like a magic ink, mm. so you can reuse. So it, it helps you learn the patterns and have like like also more neater handwriting at the same time. And it's got other like math problems and whatever, but all the things that you work out, it erases so you can redo them again and get really good at that. So skill. I have one, but it's old school and it's a booklet. It's a dry erase type. It's like the kind you used to have growing up and mm. I bought it for her. The funny thing is when she tries to tell me what letter it is, she does this. She draws it in the air. Oh, how funny. Because we're practicing the mm-hmm. writing on the thing so she writes it in the air so she can't tell me verbally what the letter is but she'll draw it out and i'll be like okay what letter is that she'll go like she knows p for penelope mm-hmm. she knows m for mom and she knows a for Wolita angeles oh, which funny. is my mom so the letters that so i try to associate things with the letters so that she knows oh yeah i remember what that's for right now we're doing soleil mm-hmm. right but then I also told her Jimena. So she tries to go, oh, Sole Jimena. Oh, okay. So she knows kind of the S, the X, not so much. It's the tough. X is kind of like an, a tough letter for her. But yeah, so you have to do little things. But again, it goes back to the same thing that we've always talked about. It goes back to the parents. Home life. Yep. Home life. What happens in home life? So if you're not active with your children, and I get it, if you're a single parent and you have to work, probably the amount of attention you can give your child is pretty small. Um, I'm not a single parent and my time is still limited uh, with my child. So I can only imagine a a mom or a dad who's a single parent um, trying to make both things happen can be difficult. But if you don't work on the weekends, make it something fun. You know what I'm saying? Like make something fun out of it is the only thing I can think of, you know, Man, what? the kids' reading has gotten so good. Like, they just started first grade, right? Not mm-hmm. too long ago. And even before that, they already knew how to read. But every time, you know, we have them and we're, like, playing or we're doing whatever, they they can just read so well. And I attribute it to the small school they go to. They're in a mm-hmm. small town. They tend to get, obviously, better educations in the sense that there's smaller groups. Classes, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's just, you know, I don't know. It's a better atmosphere. You're not going to a class with tens of thousands of kids or even hundreds of kids it's mm-hmm. like might be a mm-hmm. hundred yeah and uh it's it's so rewarding like if you spend time with your kids and then they go to school and they also have a, a good half-assed to really good education or, or teachers and then they do math problems well or they read really well you know like i don't know if uh if penny like plays anything on the tablet where she has to read yet no but it's putting well Kind of, yes. Can she put it together? Like, yes. That's awesome. Because mm-hmm. she's only three, right? Mm-hmm. That's great. By the time she's six or seven, she's going to be like, y después dijo, and but probably both in Spanish and in English. I hope English. I'm trying to really push the English on her right now because she'll be going to school next year. Yeah, she's going to be like She's us. not really doing... Wait, were, she, you, were you in ESL? Mm-mm. Oh, okay, never mind. Just me. You were? <laughs> yeah, the, English is my second language. Same here, but I didn't... Yeah. Well, I told you what my mom did, right? Mm. 
So my mom used to clean houses for a teacher when she was first, obviously, before she became a hairdresser. Um, And that teacher told her, are your kids in school? And I guess my mom said, no, actually, she starts, you know, next year. She goes, whatever you do. Does she speak English? She's like, no. Okay, well, whatever you do, don't put your daughter in ESL. I do remember this. Why? Yeah. Because she said you'll never get out of the ESL system because they obviously get more funding oh. for children that's in the ESL in the ESL classes. So they need to keep the funding that going. Makes sense. So if they let more kids go out to the general population mm-hmm. to the general classes, the funding for ESL doesn't happen because you, so you try to keep them there. Oh, now I broke that mold so fast. You're like, man, this motherfucker knows English. <laughs> yeah. So my mom. So it's funny because the first I went, started pre K and um, we have the report card and the report card in the back is like talks too much in class, doesn't listen, <laughs> isn't understanding what I'm saying. Uh, we should evaluate. My mom said, nope, 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 nope. By the second semester, I was done. I was fluent. Like, yeah. it just took, like... You just had to be immersed in Yeah, it. exactly. It was like, oh, I get it. And it was like, bam. I never, never was in ESL. So I have no idea. Like, mm. my sister was lucky. She, because she had an older sister, which is what I think is going to happen to Sunny, because she'll see... Penny speaking English and Spanish, it'll be both to her. You mm. know what I'm saying? So she'll be able to speak both without a problem, which is how it happened for my sister. That happened to my sister too. Yeah, she had so, me speaking English and Spanish. Exactly. So it was the same thing. My sister would hear me and my friend speak English. So she'd pick it up and then she'd have to speak Spanish. My sister went through a little phase though where she didn't want to speak uh, Spanish because she was trying to speak Spanish in class, in school. Right, because that's what we spoke at home. And so the teacher told my mom, she's like, hey, she's speaking Spanish in class. She can't speak Spanish in class. It has to be English, blah, blah, blah. Mom's like, hey, you got to speak English in class. Do you understand? You can't be speaking Spanish. So then my mom, it was like, it was hilarious because I think she was like in the first grade. She was little. Because then she's talking English to my mom. My mom's like, hey, why are you speaking English to me? Like, you need to speak Spanish? She goes, ¿Quién te entiende? She goes, dijiste que tenía que hablar inglés. And she said, I started, my mom's like, I cracked up. She was like, because I did. I did tell her she had to speak English, you know? She's like, but at school, I still want her to speak Spanish to me. Like, I don't want her to lose, yeah. like, Spanish, you know, just because we don't speak it. And my mom was really good about if, she was really good about not la- allowing the Spanglish at home. So I can't stand that. So yes, yeah, so my mom never allowed it. So if we said something right, let's just say I didn't know the word in Spanish. So I'd ask her like, um, how do you say this in Spanish? I'd ask her in English. And then she'd tell me and she'd say, okay, now tell me the whole sentence all over mm-hmm. again. So it was like, whatever the thing was. And then it was just like, oh, okay. And then, you know, the conversation kept going, but it was never, you couldn't, she goes, oh, me hablas inglés o me hablas español. She goes, yeah. but you're not speaking both here at the same time. She's like, that's not proper. And yeah. So it was like never allowed at home. Like Spanglish was not. Now, when I'm talking to my mom, I'll catch myself like, going back and forth like some things i want to emphasize so i'll say it in spanish because you know how shit sounds harsher in spanish yeah so i'll say it in spanish but if i just talk in english but most of the time it's spanish with my mom even yeah. though she no sp- same sp- speaks perfectly i mean she has an accent but she understands anything you tell her so but yeah, mom understands if she doesn't speak it she still don't speak english oh she doesn't you know, been like 40 years i'm like how have you been here so long my grandfather retired and didn't from yeah. the school district from hisd mm-hmm. as a maintenance man right yeah never spoke yeah it's it's weird because she's smart like I, I have other relatives that are very intelligent but when it comes to english they just i almost feel like they did it on purpose They're like yeah i don't want to speak both languages. well that's what my uncle i know i know for a fact my dad's brother is like that he's taken so many english classes mm-hmm. like he's gone to hcc to take night english classes yeah i went to a church to do night yes. english classes and and still now he can read it like yeah. so he'll be able to read his like documents and knows what it says and then he'll call somebody to trans like to call and translate what his response is to whatever and they're like how the hell can you read it yeah and understand it, but you can't speak it. And that, isn't that crazy yep. how the brain works? That's, I know. It's interesting. It really is. So while I might as well take a sip of her drink here, uh, I got to recommend, and I sent it to y'all yesterday, uh, Rogan had Alex uh, Berenson on the podcast. If y'all don't remember, if y'all don't listen to Rogan, um, last year he was on there 
early pandemic, early lockdown. He was an investigative journalist. Uh, he wrote for like the New York Times and a bunch of, you know, left-leaning publications, but was exposing a ton of truth about the masks and the jabs and mm. everything. Mm. He's now banned off Twitter. He's basically banned from everywhere other than like a Substack where he writes about all these things and uncovers it and whatever exposes it. So he was back on there today and it's a fascinating podcast, man. It's shit that Chingo and I have been talking about for a year now. And he's like, look, this is what it, you know, death rates, cases, masks, blah, 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 the whole thing. Like, none of this adds up. It doesn't make sense. And if you're willing to open your uh, ears to it, which if you're listening to this, you probably have an open mind, I would go listen to it. Alex Berenson. It's the newest episode? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm so over it already. I hear you. And here's why I'm over, even over it more. I'm going into my apparel. All right? Okay. I have been trying to order apparel, guys, just so y'all know. Since August, before August, before I had the baby, mm. I was trying to have all my merch ready so that when I came home, all I was doing was giving it to Insta to go photograph. Mm -hmm. I can't get a large, an extra large, or mediums. So there's a small. There's 3X. There's no 2X. All right, so let me switch a color. My idea of this color palette is not there. Let me go to another color palette. All right, so there's mediums, but no larges, extra large, and 3X. And it's like, oh, my God, we can notify you. Everything is like notify me. I have so many notify me's, like, right now that I've clicked on so that I get notified when they're back in stock so I can buy it. So I had to yesterday, I had to go to this one place where we get our T-shirts from. And I had to go there, and luckily, she had something similar to what I had been looking for, right? It's not the kind of hoodie that I wanted. Oh, you know the zip-up jackets that I've been talking about? Yeah. Okay, I can't, I, I still can't order in. There's not any in, like, the sizes I need. I have to go all the way to 3X. Like, I can't just, like, exclude my heavier set women. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not doing it. And if I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make something and only have small through medium, um, small through mediums also because, I'm sorry, large. Okay. So there's small, medium, and large, but I can't get ex, uh, extra large, 2X, and 3X. And I know to most, they'd be like, who gives a fuck? Like, you know, I know. I would like to not give a fuck, but I also do give a fuck. So I can't have those sizes, just not. So it's like, I'm not going to order something that can only go up to size large. And then what, what's what the rest? Yeah. You know? So it's like, it's been really hard for me to get anything. I can't even like, I can't even get my merch out. I can't even get my merch out guys. So if you're wondering like why there are so many, I went on my website yesterday mm -hmm. I'm going to delete a lot of the items because there's so many items that say sold out. And mm. it's almost embarrassing. Like there's so many sold out. I mean, it's a good problem, but it's like I can't even restock them. Right. Because I'm the side. Yesterday, we went, when I went to JLT, I'm looking for black T-shirts to restock the no, uh, ain't no hood like motherhood. Okay. A simple black T-shirt. Right. I can't. I can't get them. We got the FJB stuff in. Yes, and those are one brand for smalls, another brand for medium and large, another brand for extra large, and another brand for 2X and 3X. Oh, wow. Because th we got to remember, well, with screen printing, it's a little bit different. They don't have to be 100% con, but like the the Loteria shirts that Chingo has in his collection right now, those can only be 100% cotton. And those shirts are a little bit more expensive. You would think that they would be more of those, right? But I guess people are having to buy that mm. because they can't get the cheaper shirts. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's been really tricky because it's and it's frustrating, you know, when you're trying to put stuff out and you can't even do that. Um, I just went and dropped off some stuff. Finally, it's going to be a unit. Um, it is going to be part of the motherhood um, collection, not nice. the mom gang collection. The mom gang I can't wait for. I've been trying to get a pink zip up. I cannot get a pink sip up. I can't can't get them in, in sizes that I need. I've been so frustrated. Coming twenty twenty two, fall of twenty twenty two, if possible. It's like by the time by the this design's so old. I've had it. I've had it since. I told Midnight, who designed the Mom Gang for me. Okay, I need this no long no later than July fifteenth. Did you hear the date? July fifteenth. It's almost Thanksgiving. It's 
almost October 15th. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, Friday. Three months ago. Almost. Bruh. And I haven't been able to pull it, like, put out the this collection because... I'll find them in, in these sizes, but they don't have them in these sizes. And these sizes become available. The other sizes do not become available. It's just like, oh, can we just end whatever is happening right now? I'm over it. Like, nah, it's just beginning, man. We're, we're trying. Like, it's just ridiculous. Don't, don't you think? It's oh, like, for sure. Wait, let's shout out. To, well, you know, maybe on a, on a lighter note, shout out to your patrons. I noticed I told you yesterday. I was like, oh, you're, the Patreon's growing. We got like 20 Yo. something. You got like 21 in there, I think. I'm so excited for them. So this week on 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 Patreon, we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna post. I think I'm gonna do video. I don't know that I'm gonna do an entry this time, just because I think <sighs> explaining tennis shoes is gonna be too too like um, too lengthy to sure. write about. So um, I'm making the video of my three favorite shoes that I go to, even though I have a gazillion other tennis shoes, but mm-hmm. these are my three go to for working out. Um, so I can't wait to like really get into it for them as people are starting to join to you know jump on this health bandwagon I and i'm not it. saying a bandwagon because i hope you don't fall off of it right and it's not just uh it's not oh, it's just for right now it's a lifestyle yeah um but i'm excited for it because i feel like um and, and the funny thing check this out rob i've had zero problems finding the apparel for the athletic wear really that's great, which is what you which wanted is to great. focus on. I know. That's what I wanted to focus on. But is that not weird? It is. Like the athletic stuff I can find. So no one's buying athletic shit or what? M- meanwhile, that's what you should exactly. be Exactly. You know, it's like, what the hell? So, um, but again, I will say, here's the problem with that. More expensive? <sighs> the, the bigger sizes are expensive. Yeah. So anything past a large, and I need to make, I try to make it reasonable for the consumer mm-hmm. also. So that's always what I keep in mind. So sometimes I'll see like a badass, like, oh my God, this is going to be so cool. And then it's like, yeah, the retail price for this. I don't know yet. I don't know if my, if my audience is, pl- I'll is, get is back willing. To you. Yeah. If my audience is ready to pay those prices yet, you know, um, pizza was like, quit saying that you're not Nike, you know, like quit saying that because you're not thinking positive about your brand you know you i know that but i'm you know i just started i'm not jim shark i'm not winnie whitney what's her name uh the other girl she's a youtuber who's also into she's like friends with the buff bunny girl yeah and, i don't remember her name i know buff bunny uh i can't remember the whitney girl's last name but anyway but even jim shark for instance like the stuff that you i'm mean, some of the stuff you can find things that are better quality than some of the brands that have made it big because you'll scale up and then they'll just kind of like slowly take away from their quality from time mm. to time. At least I've found not not saying that Gymshark did or whatever, but some brands will do that. They'll just you'll cut cut costs to make more profit. Once they already have a scalable or a scaled company like that, it may not be as good as it once was. Mm. I know some of them do improve. I guess I've never bought anything from Alphalete or um, same. I've never bought anything from there or Gymshark. Yeah, I don't but, like anything that's. I don't like to buy anything that's like everybody wants to. I know that's really weird, but. <laughs> You're one of those. You got to be like original as fuck. And yeah, I want you to. I'd rather buy from somebody who's just starting off. Yeah. Because maybe because I'm not. And, and they were there once, too. So I can't say like they're not. You know what I'm saying? And you'll probably be there, too, at one point, And then someone's going to be I like. So. I mean, I used to buy her. Apparel, I know. But she got too big. I never bought their stuff just because I wasn't a bro gym person. I think a lot of the gym shark and alpha lead is very bro gym. Bro, don't you, think? you were totally bro gym. What are you I talking about? I was bro gym, but I wasn't like bro gym. I'm going to wear the stuff that everybody's wearing except for DLB stuff. You're and just it, making an hey, exception? Hey. What? Yeah. And you know what was so funny? I never forget whenever it was like, <laughs> y'all, I know this is like, what? Listen, y'all. So DLB also makes weightlifting um, belts, belts, right? And so I remember I was at the gym and I saw the flag nor fell on the back of the of the belt. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. And I just like had to go up to him and I just had badass belt. And like, you know, you did a fist yeah, bump. I was sure. like, you're so stupid. <laughs> why would you do that? Like when I think about it right now, yeah. like, why would you do that? But it's almost like a community. It is. Our community. It you is. know what I'm saying? That's my goal. I want for people whenever they're out and about. Oh, because it happened to Kim. Check this out. Okay. And it made me feel so good. So Kim was wearing, Kim is my, my, um, cold brew drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've had her on the podcast before. Yep. She's fun. And guys, when she opens her, um, 
coffee shop, which is only open on the weekends right now as a pop up event because she's still trying to get some things going. I can't wait for it to be like legit open all the time. But um, and I'll tell you guys when that happens, um, because I really would like for y'all to go support her if you're in Houston. Um, And it's female owned. So, you know, even more so. But anyway, um, she told me she was her wearing her mom wife hustler crop top that I put out last year or year before. And um, she said the this girl came up to her and said, Oh, my God, don't you love her? She's like, I have all her stuff. And I said, she said that. Yeah. I was like, Kim, you should have recorded that. I was like, I would have loved to have heard it for myself. Like, you know, she's like, well, I was just kind of like caught off guard. She's like, I'm at the grocery store. How funny. She's like, I, how was I supposed to know someone was going to like recognize this mom, wife hustler? Yeah. Like, you know, thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm wearing it because, you know, I support you, whatever the case is. And she's like, but then someone came up to me and she was like, oh shit, like people are really bad. And I was like, well, that made me feel so good. Like, at the show this weekend in Addison, someone was wearing this old, old um, shirt that I brought out three years ago. It was a jersey and it said mujer. Okay. And um, it's like a fist like this mm-hmm. done inside the, the oh, yeah, female um, symbol or whatever. Yeah. Um, and someone totally told me that was the communist fist. And I was like, it is not. It's supposed to be the female symbol, but I get like power. Like that's right. how I see it. Like female mujer power, not, you know, but anyway, uh, I'll never forget that DM. Cause I'm, I was like, what? No. <laughs> um, but anyhow, um, she wore that and I said, Oh my God, you have one of these. I'm like, those were a one time, like those were kind of pricey to make. Mm-hmm. So, you know, color. No, because of the, they were jerseys. Oh, that's right. They were jerseys, mm-hmm. so they were a little bit pricier. But it made me, I, I felt so good to see like her wearing that. I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's one of my pieces. Like one of my pieces that I put out a long time ago, which is also very funny that while I was out in, in Addison, I got an alert on my phone that said three years ago, you did mm. took pictures with this shirt and it was Penny and I, because I had done the baby onesies also that said Mohead on mm-hmm. there. So it was the mom, sh- mommy and me. So, yeah. So um, I, it feel, it's a good feeling. So, I mean, I completely understand. I mean, I'm sure when they're seeing their shit out in public, you know, like people rocking it. I mean, their sales are up the roof, I'm sure, especially with the alpha elite, you know, because right. he's done so much and you can't take anything away from him either. I mean, he's worked his little tail off, you yeah. know, and he's bought his paper. So, you know, shout out to uh, what is his name? Christian Guzman. Yeah. Because, I mean, he's doing his thing and I'm, I don't knock anybody's hustle. That's, you know. That's like that. That's, that's that's why I said that day when I came in and I was like, yo, we're talking about Jenny 6 9 mm-hmm. And it's like, is that a joke? Because when I posted, I'm jamming this, I'm jamming her song on the day that it releases. Yeah. You should have seen how many DMs to the reply were like the the crying laughing face, right? <laughs> like, is this a joke type thing, right? So that's 69. But y'all, she's on Univision now. They interviewed her. Telemundo interviewed. Ryan Seacrest interviewed her, Okay. Um, Ryan Seacrest. How did you hear about Jenny Six Nine? I don't know. It's somebody that you know probably passed the word, you know. Because it went viral. <clears throat> she, this girl went did. viral on TikTok and everywhere, and she was like all over. And now, granted, they were like memes, of even mean ones. But she's, she's, it's like Chappelle. She's laughing all the way to the bank, boo boo. Because y'all, y'all made her video number one trending on YouTube. That's how many times it had been watched. So. Wow. I, I think I saw something of her talking about how she when she was was she pregnant and she was like drinking micheladas and drinking, drinking beer and stuff, like some pretty damning videos. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me, but that's probably why a lot of the comments on there is always like, "Go work on being a mom." That's oh, a there lot you go. Of, a lot of times people are saying that, but I thought it was because of the last video, the only video that I've seen where people took it as though because she told her son to be quiet or something like that, and he's got autism. Oh shit! That um, she didn't know how to handle him and blah blah blah. They were like, "You're such an unfit mother," and people were going at her about it. I'm just like, oh, we're so quick to. <laughs> to judge other moms boy like and i'm not saying i've never done it right like because i've seen some bitches out there and i just be like yo these get your get your kid please you know guilty but um it's it's something like her you know what i'm saying it's like and and i go back to the kardashians like i'm a kardashian fan i was like how dare you be a kardashian fan because y'all they took literally they took just 
oh, like they were smart about social media. And I know, did you see her monologue on SNL? I did. Oh, yeah. Like, why am I here? Even I'm wondering that. That the whole thing. It I was think I hilarious. Saw it. Yeah, I, saw I thought it was funny that she's like, she, she hadn't been in a premiere of a movie since her last premiere. You get it? From the sex tape. <laughs> I, didn't, and, I didn't even pay attention yeah, to that. Yeah. And then she said, um, actually, I didn't even know it was premiering because he put it out without supposedly her knowing, right? And so then, um, and then she talked about, she's like, everyone always calls me a, a gold digger, but I don't know how to be a gold digger. Blah, blah, blah. She goes, but I asked my mom's boyfriend, Corey, because the guy that she dates, you know, they call mm-hmm. him the gold digger, right? Because he <laughs> was nobody. And, you know, here he's dating Chris Jenner, you know? Dude, that La, La 69, uh-huh. I mean, I just, I wanted to find the one, uh, I've tried to find a compilation of the one I'm talking about, but there is uh, Micha Lala's for Pregnant Girls. Like she has videos from five years ago. Where obviously she looks nothing like she looks like now, but um, no, dude, that's wild. And then I'm just scrolling down, and there's you know other music channels have like reposted it. There's a clip here that has 6.4 million views on a channel that only has 53,000 subscribers, and the ratio is 22 percent. There's 314,000 dislikes and 80 likes. This is not a, she's not trending for any good reason, but hopefully she's laughing to the bank because I don't know if she's ever going to get this kind of attention again. Well, she's all over these news media, like all these these news networks, right? And um, they really have been putting her out there. And she, and, and the, what, the funny thing is, is like she's like, y'all, I never said I was a singer. Yeah. I never said I was going to make a song. Yeah, good for her. And she's like, and I knew that she was going to go viral. Wow. She said she knew it. Yeah, well, you got to say that now when it does, right? Which is, sure, shows confidence. But she, If she's smart... She'll monetize on this wave, bro. Oh, for sure. For you, however you long to. it lasts, it doesn't matter. The fact that she jumped on her wave and ran with it and, and however much money she makes off of it, she's a genius. And this is what I mean, guys. Like, you have got to be smart about your branding. Like, and you have got to figure out who you are and like the things that you're about because that's what's going to make you stand out. And that's what makes this girl stand out. That's why Ilse always says there's a, a hundred, it, like in her case, there's a hundred influencers, right? There's mm-hmm. a million influencers, but she stands out because she's doing shit that's going to make you go talk about her. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that it's necessarily all in a good way, but it's also not in a bad way. So, you know, she's got eyelashes in fucking Walmart, bro. She sells hear her voice. This song has been auto-tuned to the gods. People are hate. <laughs> Make that sound just like her, y'all. <laughs> okay, now there's this, right? I would have thought her Now voice let's would let's fast forward because this looks teacher. like this is about to get even More funnier. Of a horse and we're not hating, we're just watching a review like video. This. Okay. That. Doesn't fit the beat. I mean, she doesn't fit that beat. No um <laughs> no, I mean well uh, you know what I'm trying to, to say. It just I feel she does Damn. It's like there's somewhere in this video where they have the non uh, edited non auto tune and auto tune version. But anyway. <laughs> People just hating. Well, you can hate because she's, she's making all that bank. And she ain't worried about shit. She no. she showed how she went to go trade in her Lamborghini because that's what she was driving before. <laughs> okay. Okay. She traded in her Lamborghini for a mamalona, a big old truck. Really? Totally. totally. After this after this video. I mean, after this song. That's what I thought was hilarious. So I guess before this song, she was a Lamborghini. Now she's a mamalona because, you know, <laughs> that's what we call the Tahoe, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's funny how was that on the road trip by the way it's great but as you know it's a gas it's hundred dollars to fill it up i'm just like damn how much longer am i gonna have to fill up this tank because uh well shit when you need a bus <laughs> to get the whole crew i'm just like this is really expensive and if you own a uh, an suv you feel me if rob has a little bitty car y'all yeah what do you put 35 30 yeah, probably like 30 yeah but even, it's it's not very fuel efficient, honestly. Oh, it's not? No, no, no. My Honda is, but even my Honda is taking $40 oh, to yeah. fill up. And it's my Honda. Yeah. Like, my little four-cylinder car, that, that is my, that is my, like, till death do us part. Because <laughs> it is so, she's so good to me. And there's so many lights on on the dash. I'm surprised it's so, like, it's, it's a Honda. It's, oh, it's, I, I, listen, anything that's wrong with our vehicles, <laughs> I just want you to know it wasn't me. 
But they got me on the cannon. No, it was not me. Ask Chingo how those lights are like that. He's going to be like, I don't know. <laughs> so he was at midnight's. He said they were getting ready to leave. And I, next thing you know, he hears someone like, here's like, they hear something crash. They look out the window, didn't see anything. Kept minding, kept doing what they were doing. He's getting ready to head out. Someone hit the Honda. <laughs> someone ran into it, totally crashed it. And then just drove off. And drove off. Oh, piece of shit. It was in the part where the car is like where you open like the. The door. Yeah. But the little crease, like mm-hmm. the. That was all smashed in. He comes and shows up to the house like that. And I'm just like. What, what was your reaction? <laughs> oh, my God. That's why we can't have nice things. So I was, that's what I say all the time. <laughs> Ask him. That's my biggest complaint. I like, love it. It's so I was funny. like, I'll never have anything nice in my house. I'm like, because it, it just, it doesn't survive. I'm like, it gets ruined. Like, I'm over it. Like, I want a new couch so bad. And I'm just not doing it because... He actually sent me something funny, something, you know, just before we started recording. Someone else's post that said, uh, y'all want big ass houses and expensive cars. I want multiple rental houses and an efficient vehicle. We're not the same. <laughs> <laughs> Which 20-year-old him probably wouldn't have said that, but that's a part of growing up. It's amazing what what you talk about now when you're an adult. Like, your your conversations are so different like big time different um i saw this girl at the gym and she was telling me she was like (laughs) it's like it's not really a compliment but i guess it is she was like well how old are you she's like you know and i said i just turned 40 she's like what she's like oh i didn't know you were that old okay (laughs) i'm not that old it's only 40 she's like well that gives me hope like because everybody gives me a hard time so i'm just gonna turn 30 and i still don't have kids and i said Wait a minute, like, it's not a compliment if that's what you think you're telling me by telling me I look great, right? Like, I mean, she's like, I'm going to be 30. And I was like, I just told her, I said, don't let anybody pressure you into having children. I said, you will feel it. And if you never feel it, that you want to have kids, then it's not for you. You've got to feel it. Like, for me, that's exactly what it was. And it happened at 36, turning 37. So I didn't have my first child until I was 37 years old. Yeah, that, that can't happen to me because by the time I'm 37, Dawn's going to be like 44 or something. <laughs> oh, you only have a couple of years left. What is she, 35, 36? She's 37 right now. 37. You have three years to decide, bro. Yeah, no, I'm good, bro. You don't want good. any of Fuck your own? No. Not no. even one? Not ni uno. I know. I felt like that too, bro, but I swear to you, it was like something that came <sighs> out. The twins are going to be 10 and I will have been in their life since they were two and a half. No way. I get it because I felt like that. I know. With Mickey. But every time you tell this story where you're like, but then I had this feeling and I told Pete, I, did. I think I want kids. I did. Get That's out exactly of here. how it happened. I literally was watching and I was like, I'm going to grow old and never know what it was like to have my own child. Like my own child that came out of my vagina. <laughs> And it's going to call me mother, not because I'm her stepmother, but because I'm her mother. Mickey doesn't call me mom anyway, but I'm just saying like, no, like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that if I, I wanted to miss up, like miss that opportunity ever. And, but, but I had told Pete, I'm not going through any treatments. So, so should my body not, not want to get pregnant, then it wasn't for me then it wasn't in my book. Like it wasn't in my story. Yeah. It's how I the cards. yeah it's like mm. what well, I like to say story because oh, oh, I am sorry. the author of my own life. And okay. that's, that was part of my plot twist in my story. So, um, it's one hell of a plot twist. Yeah. And then I decided to have another one. <laughs> that's even more of a plot twist. <laughs> and I purposely wanted the C-section said nobody. <sighs> uh, but yeah, so I just think that, um, I just told her, I said, listen, don't let anybody influence you. If you never like have the urge or want or want to p- have that responsibility, it's it's because you honestly don't want it. It's not like a made up thing. Like mm-hmm. that's how it was for me. It was not a, like it was like. No, it's total biological thing. Totally. It was totally for me. It was like, who wants that? Like, why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> And now I'm asking myself the same question. <laughs> Why did you As do you're this? trying to dig a shit yeah, and read a book. Exactly. Why would you do this to yourself? Like, Hey, we were, we were talking about the uh, uh, school elections earlier. 
And before we wrap up this uh, public episode and move on to Patreon, if you're not there, go sign up. It is, and I tried to find this yesterday for Chingo, but I couldn't, but it's the second, um, so the notice of school board trustee election for Houston ISD. It's Monday, right? It's uh, the second day of November. It says the HISD district on the second day of November Oh, I thought it was on the 18th, which is Monday. Uh, the following candidates have been filed for the HISD 2021, uh, scheduled for Tuesday, November 2nd. Oh, okay. So oh. this is for uh, an election will be held in the geograph- geographic district. So there's six different districts in Houston on the second day of November for the purpose of electing a trustee for each of the following districts. So they kind of go through explaining how HISD works as far as the board and the trustees and what the trustees you know do, I guess. So, I don't know. I feel like we have some, or y'all, especially since y'all live in Harris County, I live in Fort Bend County, um, kind of find out what these people are about. Like, what are you running on? What are you saying? Like, what, you know, I understand for parents it's tough because there's, there's a 36912. There's like 18 plus people on this. Like, you got to find out who these people are. What have they been talking about? What are they going to do? And that's what I think most parents go through. Yeah. It's like, I don't have time to do this shit. This should be y'all's job to elect the right people to educate our kids, right? And not one that's teaching communism either, you know? Yeah. I mean, hello. It's like you it's like I can't. I can't I can't risk my child learning anything and and um I can't believe like that one little girl that got oh. um arrested for not wanting to wear a mask at school. Oh yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. What is happening? Yep. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's, I, I say this every time. I know, guys, it's like, it's just too much, but yet I continue to talk about it. I know that. But it's like, this is how I express myself with all this, like, overwhelming bullshit. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what it is that ha- that's happening in our world. And, um, I don't think that we care enough about it. And if we do, maybe we're just not standing up and speaking loud enough because we're all afraid, yeah. you know, to be judged or, did they knock? No. Oh, to be judged or, you know what I'm saying, or be, you know, talked about or looked at or unfollowed or, you know, whatever the case may be, you know? Um, for me, it's, um, I'm glad I've stopped caring if you follow or unfollow me because I hope that the people that do follow me are people that are open minded and are free thinkers and don't have to agree with me. But, you know, they know that I'm just an individual who is, you know, concerned for certain situations. And, and it's like I, I was telling, like, it's like I was telling um, uh, Sean today, I never said I wouldn't get the vaccine. Mm-hmm. I just said this vaccine for me is not going to be the one. It ain't I, it. I, I need you all to figure shit out. Cool. I need you to really research this shit before I put it in my body. I never said I wouldn't get it. Never say never. I'm just saying right now, today, your vaccine does not convince me. Can we also say it's not a vaccine? Or it's, whatever it it's is. It's a therapeutic at best. Yeah. So whatever it is, I just, I feel better off. And, and my mom, I swear to you, for someone who's so, an, she's. Red pills. S- red pilled. <laughs> she's so too, like, she, she texted me when we were out there. She's like, I really wish that you could find someone else to go work the merch for you. And I said, okay, well, yeah, there isn't anybody. I was like, so, you know, and, um. And even when I get someone else to to sell the merch, it never sells the way if I'm the one selling because it. Because I got to meet Marisol. I want to take a it's picture. It's like, oh, my God. It, well, people come back and I'm like, what? What was this? <laughs> merch? This is all you sold for merch? Yeah. Mm. All right, then. I'm just like, breathe in, breathe out. But anyway, she texts me to tell me. Please make sure you're wearing a mask. You're around so many people. Make sure you're like using hand sanitizer at all times. I I wash my hands and ha- use sanitizer a lot, regardless. That has nothing. That's why my damn cuticles are always dry. But that has nothing to do with the COVID. That's just been a habit of mine. Period. Um, but she told me that I was like, Ma, you read almost every email that was put out about Fauci. You were mad about the mask situation that said it didn't work and here you were wearing it and you're telling me to wear it i'm like where do you yeah what's your what's your justification yeah i'm like i don't understand she goes well even if it helped you even if it's a little bit at least it'll protect you a little bit so my mom still makes people wear masks when they go into her business Mm. and the hair salon so she'll still make you wear a mask she doesn't it's just like i wear it and for her it's more like because she was saying i need to think about the girls if i have covid i'm going to pass it to them right when I told you I had that little scare, mm-hmm. I was nervous about 
you know, what if I did have COVID and I pass it on to the girls, especially my newborn, mm-hmm. you know, because of course I Googled, can babies get COVID, right? And of course it sets on there that yes, and they're less likely to survive. See, and I was like, I've oh read the opposite, my but- God, I was like, if my baby catches this, she's not going to survive. She's only <clears> a couple <throat> of weeks old. Like she's not even, uh, she was only a month at that time. I was just like stressed out about it. And then I'm like, I don't know what I was doing to myself during that time. I think I was just terrified about my heart and I was terrified to catch COVID and the heart situation. And I was like, oh my God, if I caught this shit plus my heart issue, I'm like, I'm so fucked, but I didn't have either. Yeah. I don't know if we talked about that on the public episode or it was a Patreon episode, but did you end up going back yet and doing your... I did. uh, The heart machine is sitting on top of my dresser. I still haven't even put it on (laughs) I know. So you ended up getting the one where you have to wear to monitor to you, monitor you for, for a couple, 30 days. Yeah, I told you that I see I didn't do that. But you, the, the package is brand new sitting on my dresser. You did the stress test. You did the echo. They did not do the stress test because she says you have to do radi- They do some kind of type of uh, like radiation. No. To take it. Uh uh-uh. Did you do an echo? Party? That's coming in 30 days because they're supposed to. Mo- I'm supposed to wear the thing so they can monitor my heart. And then when I go back. On the 30th day, that's when I'm supposed to get the echo. Bro, can you call Dr. Jeremy and be like, look, this is what they want me to do in this order because that is a complete opposite order. Oh, that, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then I'll have to call him. Yeah. Okay, I'll call him because I was like, I'm going to have to wear this thing. It's sitting there brand new. I still haven't even put it on. No, nah, dude, it was echocardiogram for me. and then. This, uh, this but you don't do any type of radiation? No, like no, It's no, like a, no. a scan of the, no. of the body uh-uh. or something? She's like, well, you breastfeed. I really would like it like you not to have it and and also she said she concluded based on everything that i had was that i didn't need a a, a stress test okay well that's good too. i mean i did those two in the same day it was just yeah. the, the echo uh, of the heart and then the uh, stress test and then after that they're like if you want based off what we've seen you could opt to do this just to be like 100 percent, but we're like 99.9 percent sure you're fine she felt like she was 99.9 that there was nothing wrong with yeah. me. It was probably just a one episode mm-hmm. because of all the stress on my body, the no sleeping, the C-section. Life. Uh, life, yeah. <laughs> so she was like, I think it was that. Your body was trying to fight whatever it was. She's like, but to be 100%, let's do the 30-day yeah. thing, and then we'll schedule you for your echo when you come in the day after we check, monitor you for the next 30 days. Yeah, at least just relay that to Dr. Jeremy and then... Yeah, it's been sitting there on my dresser. I still haven't put it. It came in right before I was leaving. I'm, I was I've been home for two days. I came home Monday. Didn't do anything because we came home in the afternoon. Yesterday was our first official day work back. day. Yeah. yeah, and I'm leaving today. So, And we're podcasting before I leave. So that should just tell you how <laughs> rushed it is. And trust me, I was thinking about not going. Mm-hmm. But it's six shows. And who's going to run the merch? And who's... It's six shows. I have to be there, mm. unfortunately. I'm not worried about Riley. It's a one, one-nighter. one I'm not going to that. Vegas, I'm not LA. going to Irvine. I'm not going to Irvine either. Um, I'll be here for Houston, obviously. I am going to Salt Lake, and I am going to Las that Vegas night. because they're... Salt Lake's only our second time doing it, so we're still not like if I we already had worked there several times, like we do with the improvs, I probably would be like, "Hey, can you find someone to mm-hmm. work our merch?" And I'd be kind of fine with it, right? When it's big weekends like this, right? They already have to be pretty much staffed for waiters, so asking them to let us borrow one of their staff members to run the merch kind of becomes uh, mm-hmm. a little bit of a conflict because it's like, uh, so we need them here. And they're not going to just let one person come in just to work the merch. Does that make sense? And I get it as a business. You're just not going to bitch you finna pay us to pay them or what, you know? So Mm -hmm. I I totally get it. Um, So because it's such a big weekend, that's why it's like necessary for me to go. But like the one nighters, I already kind of already like put it in my head that we're just not going to make that money on merch. It's just going to be whatever Mm -hmm. the the comic or whoever's able to help is going to sell whatever they're able to sell. And I'm over it. Salt Lake city, like I said, we'll be there. Um, it's only like, I think it's actually, I think our third time there, um, last year was canceled. I don't even think we put it in the books actually, because we didn't know what was up. So it's just now being put in the books Mm. this year. So I think we've only been there once, to be honest with you. And it was at the beginning of the, I think, 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've only been there once. This will be the second time. 
Um, in Salt, and I'm sorry, in Vegas, that's it's the same owner, brand new club though. Nice. So, I for real have to go. It's also a one nighter. Cool. So it's one of those things. I was just talking to Louisa before I got here. I was like, so how do you feel about? keeping both girls overnight like i get a penny but what about a baby because you know she's gonna have to like you know she wakes up yeah so i asked her and she was kind of like mm. i was like i get it if you can't i'm like i can ask my mom i ask pete's sister like hey how do you feel about this you know worst case if i can't go then i can't but pete's like uh nah bro i can't roll to this one by myself like <laughs> not this not these places like yeah. they're not like even he knows like these are not places i can roll by myself so we'll see all right totally a um business conversation that i just had with rob <laughs> and it hope, totally happened on the podcast everybody's listening right now as they're driving like what is happening Dude, people like, love this inside baseball kind of talk yeah yeah mm. oh yeah yeah lots of uh stuff um brewing brewing yeah you know what i want to find though is like a legit like tia member or a uh, her community member mm-hmm. in these cities where i can go and be like yo i will pay you to go work the merch you know what i'm saying like when bro that- don't put that out there too 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 loud because that for sure could you know come to fruition because i think that that would help i again it'd be for the one nighters not for the weekend shows i think it's a lot of responsibility to oh to, yeah to have that like It'd have to be somebody who already knows how to like kind of work. Mm-hmm. Like you have to work fast too because you have a shitload of people come in and yeah. it's like, you want what, what, what? And it's like, okay, cash, credit card, and you're doing how much? Do I, you know, you got to like, you just got to be on top of it. So, um, but yeah, I think I, I, I want to put, I do want to put that out there because <laughs> like next year, I don't know that I want to travel this much. I really want to focus. I told you on her community like mm-hmm. i really want to focus on my patreon a lot more than what i'm trying to right now i'm doing baby steps there um if you haven't checked it out guys uh it's her lounge podcast uh www.patreon. or forward slash i'm sorry her lounge podcast okay mighty soul says this i don't know how many times a day <laughs> it's very it's it's patreon.com <laughs> forward slash her lounge podcast <laughs> Even if you just went to Patreon and you typed in Mighty Soul, if you typed in Her Lounge, it'll pop up. It's a big pink logo that says Her on it. You can't miss it. I had to text Rob the other day. I'd like to post my my Patreon. Can you tell me what the link is? He's like, of what? What? I was like, oh, She's I think like, I, got I got it. it. I got it. Um, go check it out, guys. I want to make a community. Uh, I want to make it better. It's not there yet, but let, let me finish uh, this, this weekend and... Uh, I really, th- I told Pete, I said, during this off time, when the tour's over, I'm going ham. I said, because I really want to take the next couple of months to really like bring some good stuff to the patrons to where they find it worth mm-hmm. joining. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, I think that they feel like that now. That's why mm-hmm. they're willing to join. Right. But I really want to make it like, oh, I really want to be a part of this community. Like, I feel great. Like the info that's given um i want to have someone on that is ta- that talks about budget I, I forwarded you that email mm, yes you did i, I want to do more research on her but i think that'd be great to yeah. have someone talk about that that, w- that will also be on the um that'll be a premium episode yeah anybody who i bring on i want to have them on the premium episodes mm-hmm. just because you know I think my it's exclusive type. Yeah, it's exclusive. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I want to have them on. Um, I want to have her on because I think we're about to go into a really weird. Uh, if if it's really true that we're gonna have a dark winter. Yeah. I think budgeting is gonna be very. It's gonna be very important because a lot of us are going to spend money on christmas gifts for some maybe this year is not possible that is the reason why i honestly want to do like what marissa did i think they did almost like an adopt the family type thing which oh, that's cool, where we yeah. gave a christmas tree to she was able to give uh she gave them excuse me um uh toys a i think tree? a turkey we gave them a tree yeah, yeah. we give them a tree a christmas tree because even some people can't even get that I you know what i'm saying so that's why I would really, I told Pete, I really want to have a mixer in December, like a Christmas mixer. I wanted to do a Friendsgiving, but I think it's too soon. I don't know that I can plan a Friendsgiving um, that fast. Oh, uh, I'll put this out there on the public episode before we wrap up. Gabe hit me up. So we were trying to do some kind of like 
TIA get together, right? Some kind of uh, meetup or whatever. Mm -hmm. He offered to cater an event, like before the Houston shows. Like, could we figure out somewhere to like barbecue and have a big like catered type of? I was thinking, him and I just kind of we ping pong this idea. I think on the live Zoom we did two mm-hmm. months ago, and then it kind of just stayed there. And then he hit me up uh, a couple of days ago about maybe doing a a, bar- a barbecue or a catered kind of event before the Houston, you know, shows. So I was like, all right, what could we do? So I'm, I'm putting it to you now to put it in your head, you know, kind of cram it in there with the other 15 things mm. you got rolling around. I don't know if we could do like a comedy and, you know, uh, what, what would it be? I don't know. Comedy and cookout. The only sucky, cookout. sucky thing is this. It's either it'd have to be, it can't be Wednesday because he's in Irvine. Mm. So he's flying back Thursday and then he has a show that night. Oh, shit. Yeah. So if I'm not mistaken... Because he has a show here Thursday. Through Sunday? Through Sunday, yeah. And he's in Irvine Wednesday. So it either have to be you ended on Sunday, like it's during the day before it ends. Mm-hmm. Or it's like before the show's on a Friday or a Saturday type thing. That's the only... It's super, super kind of last minute for the Houston shows, but it's a good, it's a cool idea. It's yeah. So nice I, that's what I said. Like, I wanted to do, that's what I said. Like, I think, I, I, and I told him, I said, it needs to be like TIA and her community. So if you're listening right now, TIA and my chingonas, mm-hmm. my patronas and my badass chicks, yeah. which are my tears on, on my uh, Patreon would all get to come. Um, would all the, the entrance would be free. Um, and then you would just need to bring a toy to donate. Mm-hmm. But if you're not a member, then obviously that's for the toy drive idea. That's for yeah. the toy drive idea. Yeah, you would. There'd be a cover because we'd obviously have to give the venue yeah. whoever it is, right? And then bring a toy. You know, so it's double. But mm-hmm. so it'll be up to you if you'd like to come or not. But I really want to have um, something like that. I thought about even because. Pete's nephew is really into the catering stuff. Mm -hmm. If this was something that he'd want to sponsor, Mm. you know, because it would promote his business as well for, because that's what he does And his brisket guys. I'm not just saying this because he's my husband's nephew, but I really can't do a lot of stuff like that because sometimes it's over smoked and I get like, um, indigestion, heartburn. Ah, and so I don't do a lot of barbecue because of that reason. If Mm. it's too smoked, I end Mm. up, his is like the right, I've, I'm going to knock on wood because as of right now, I've been with, with Pete for seven years. I've never had heartburn with his food. Oh, wow. And it's it's obviously smoked and so forth. And I haven't yet. So if you're somebody like me who gets heartburn from like barbecue that's too smoky or a lot of, love, a lot of people love that shit. They like for it to have that real smoky, mapley, uh, I guess, flavor or whatever. But it messes me up. Like I get heartburn bad. So I avoid barbecue. And that's that, a, that's, that, suck? that sucks. Yeah, it sucks big time. Because I'll see it and I'll be like, oh man, I want it so bad. Give me I'll have meat. to have a little bit a little bit of it. Bef- otherwise, I'll just be Some jalapeno the whole night. sausage? Exactly. Mm. Ooh, that's different. Jalapeno cheddar sausage? Bro, we stopped at a place on the way back from, where was that? I forgot where Pete and I went. I don't even know where we went, but we stopped somewhere and I got some. San Antonio. Oh, yeah, for the HBO thing? For the HBO thing. Mm -hmm. We stopped somewhere, and it was so good. Oh, that's where I brought the the beef jerky from. Oh, that was good as well. Yeah. I had a... You know what I got? Guys, see? This is how you have to be... These are tricks. These are tips that I'm going to show you guys on the Her Her Lounge Podcast Patreon. So, I got the um, jalapeno cheese sausage, right? And I put it on a salad, bro. I just got it chopped oh, up. Oh, yeah, that's a great <sighs> idea. Best thing you can do. Yeah. There's so many hacks like that, guys, that you can have the best of both worlds. It can be healthy and that on there. Got you some protein. Got you some veggies. Hit the road. Here, there you go. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, I'll check you guys out next week. Friday. Oh, yeah, Friday. My bad. <laughs>